Are you ready? Again, learn these lessons the hard way. So there's a couple things you can do. What I used to do, like I said, was just place the batteries one apart. So like here, in this case, we would put a battery here, 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 and then we connect them all with conduit. But what I do now, which is very interesting, and this is something I'm still playing with, um, what now what I do is I actually put one battery in everyone's room. We distribute the power. And um, what's cool about this is even though these batteries are inside the people's rooms, they still don't lose the spacious hit, um, which is great. So um, even though the uh, even though the batteries are are taking up you know two blocks in their rooms, they don't seem to mind. So right, what I'm doing now is I'm in the process of figuring out you know how big can we fill a room to still have them hold that um, that spacious bonus. I don't know if you can hear my dog dreaming, but Khan's dreaming in the other room and he's doing little yips and it's adorable. Um, but yeah, so we go we go with that round. Also, cool, you can see now they've been moving some steel into our stockpile and now we have 429, which is actually a pretty good amount. So, yeah, that's going pretty well. Now, one thing I did notice here is... Um, no, this will work. This will work. We're going we're gonna to start carving this area out a little bit. So what I'm doing now is setting the new mining areas. And I'll give you guys a little insight here on what I'm thinking in just a second. Now if you can see our plan here, if we cut these out, there's not going to be anything here to close it in. So if you go to structure, you can right click on most of these to get a list of different materials. I'm going to select steel. And we're going to build the wall right there. So that's going to encase this area. Now you can see the battery, which is connected to the network, is now charging up. So the goal is to have a bunch of maxed batteries before it turns night, and that way everything will be powered throughout the evening, since of course, we're only using that right now. Co, a 6x6 room without pot plants has 36 walkable tiles. It has to be 28 walkable tiles to get the spacious bonus, so a battery doesn't affect the bonus of 36 tiles, even with a pot plant or a wardrobe inside. Wardrobe? What is that? That sounds interesting. Um, but very good to know, Renea. And that would also explain why earlier we had a person who had a peg leg and was really slow. And we tried to place a research bench in his room. And when we put the bench in, he immediately lost his spacious bonus. Um, now, Renea, I have uh, something to ask you. Since, by the way, for those who don't know, Renea, uh, one of my honorary mods, is phenomenal at games like this. And she usually finds out tons of tips and tricks and lets us know about them. Um, but Renea, have you found any use for plants? Um, I haven't found any use for plants. They don't seem to give a, a positive bonus. They don't seem to give anything. Um, if, if there is a point to plants, I would love to know because um, I don't know what it is yet. So here, we, you can see we've started to get our, uh, our framework worked out here. What we're going to do is a fully staffed colony generally has two uh, cook stoves and at least one butcher table, depending on how much you hunt. So whenever I make my cook room, I try to make it so I can fit at least three tables into it. Um, which I don't know if I'll be able to in this room now that I'm looking at it. We may, may need to bump it out a little bit. Actually, you know what? I can just carve into that wall. That'll be fine. We'll just carve right into there. And since that'll make that side come off, we'll put that there. Now, like I was talking about earlier, um, this room here, a lot of people are going to be moving through a huge amount of the time. So what we're going to be doing is um, selecting the auto doors for this area. Kevro 1970, good show, my friend. Thank you for your sub. Really appreciate your support, and welcome, welcome, welcome to the sub club. Thank you for joining us, buddy. Really appreciate that. Let's give him a warm welcome, guys. Um, surrounding areas with nice plants can really increase the mood. See, Huspert, that's the thing. I, I have tried putting plants in rooms, and I've never seen them get a bonus from it. Like, I've, I've never looked at someone's mood and seen, like, 
you know, like plant bonus or anything like that. I, I don't know how to get that up. Now, if you guys are noticing, the ground is nasty right now. That's because we don't have a cleaner. Um, we also have all these things that we haven't finished hauling yet, too. So, as soon as we're done with this food area, we're going to spend some time cleaning out the base and making it a nicer environment. Migui. Nice. Kevro, good to see you, buddy. Th thanks again, man. So, we're going to let all these go out. We are going to go ahead and put our cook stove down. And that'll, that'll let me show you some other fun stuff there. Um, also, interesting thing to note, if you notice, I can build here, but I can't build here. If there, if you ever try to put a an item down, where the yellow, the yellow circle indicates where a colonist needs to stand to use that item. So right here, because there's a rock where they would stand, you can't place there. So just keep in mind that you cannot place where there's a rock. You basically just need to haul it out. And uh, this is now pretty much done. So we're going to go to orders, haul things, get them to clean this place up a little bit. There we go. We're going to let them keep building here. Now our uh, food area over here is going to need some power. So we'll get, we'll get that powered up. All these doors are going to need power since they're auto doors. So we'll get the conduit to them too. Now we're also going to need right here... This, this area here is going to be our food storage. Now, recently, um, they, uh, they added in temperature. And what temperature does is it influences a ton of variables, including how long uh, food takes to spoil. So if you mouse over food, you can see down here it actually says not refrigerated spoils in 30 days. Um, 30 days doesn't seem like a long time, but... Um, it, it, it goes pretty quick in this game. Bonsai, no, I'm not, I'm not going to do the airlock this way through. That's a bit advanced. Yeah, that's a bit advanced. Um, so, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll do, like, another tutorial for more advanced things to do in the game, if it gets to that point. So, uh, let's see. Also here, we want to make a butcher table. There we go. Okay, so in just a second, as soon as this gets fixed up, we're going to do two, two very important tutorials. And... Using both of these will get you, like, pretty much, that will be all you need to get your initial base set up. Everything after that, once you get these two things I'm about to show you down, you can pretty much experiment on your own and, and keep going. Um, let's go ahead. First, though, I want to get this all finished up before we do this. So, Renee is building the cook thing now. It's almost done. Perfect. Great. We're going to remove these plans because we don't need them anymore. So what we're going to do real quick is we need to get this base cleaned up. And the way we're going to do that um, is by temporarily assigning a couple people that will basically just, uh, just clean and just haul. So we need to have the grower still going. Mining we don't need so much right now, so we're going to set bonds on cleaning. And Renea right now, um, we're, we're just about to do cooking in a minute, but we don't need to do it quite yet. So, we're going to go ahead and set it there. And we're going to set her as hauling for one. Just for now. Now, watch Bonsai. This is, this is important what Bons is doing. Because this is how you take an environment from ugly environment to nice. Um, is you got to keep it clean. Now, anytime a character moves through your base, um, he does have a chance to mess it up a little bit. So, you do kind of eventually... Eventually, you will want one person in your colony always cleaning. Um, it is very helpful and uh, but of course you need to have a lot of people by the time you get to that point so you don't need to worry about it early on but what we're gonna do we're gonna let bonsai finish cleaning everything while this is going let me speed it up renea is also doing all the hauling so that's going to be important because this is going to give our base a chance to kind of catch up with all the expanding we've been doing so we're gonna let it sit for a second here as you see our batteries are very slowly going down because it's powering this area um, another thing people like in their rooms, by the way, that we're just going to throw in real quick. If you go in furniture, standing lamps, they like to have lit areas. It'll actually, they'll start getting a, a dark, in darkness, which is a minus hit. There's that ugly environment, if you just saw that too, which cleaning helps with. Are colonists more skilled in specific tasks? Oh yes, the chef, absolutely. If you click on a character, you can go through them with the period key on your keyboard, and you can see their skill levels and other things. 
Uh, at the beginning of the tutorial, I explain kind of how all these work, what the little things mean, you know, what you want at the beginning. So be sure to check back at the beginning of the, tutor the tutorial if you're looking at kind of what those skills mean and what they do. So good, Bonsai is kicking ass here. Now this is actually a good opportunity real quick to explain, okay, how does Bonsai know where to clean? How, how, how does he know when to stop and where to stop? The reason he does is because of something called home zones. Now, home zones, if you go into order or zones, um, you can click add home region to see them. Anytime you make a construction, it automatically sets a home zone around it. Now, home zones are important because this is the only area that your characters will enact specific actions in um, when doing a... Uh, when doing something. So if you mouse over home zone, you actually see what they can do. I'll read it out loud because I'm blocking it. Colonists will repair buildings, clean floors, and extinguish fires only in the home zones. So that's really important. Um, because what that basically means is that if for some reason there's a fire raging right outside of your home zone, your characters are not going to address it until it actually enters your home zone. And if, for instance, like if you look at our home zone, you see how our growing place is not really selected? We may actually want to drag that out to make sure that if something happens in here, they'll address it before it starts killing our plants. So, um, you know, that kind of stuff can be important. Another big thing is if you want to, if, if you really want to get this clean quickly and you want, for instance, your guy to focus, you can click remove home zone and take off everything except the area you want done. So especially when your base starts getting much bigger, you know, you may want to have people focus on specific areas at specific times, and you can do that there. Okay, now we're almost to the point where I'm going to show you two important things, which is A, how stockpiles work, and B, how to properly uh, get items that require bills running, which bills are a very big part of the game. So let's go ahead and keep this going. I want uh, the cleaning to be completely done and uh, everything that needs to be hauled out, hauled out. And then we'll do the, uh, the other stuff. Um, a very uh, important part about this game as well is making sure not to get ahead of yourself. It's, it's very easy, especially when you just start getting the building bug where you want to build a whole bunch of stuff. It'd be very easy for me right now to be like, okay, let's build another row of bedrooms, and then we're going to build our craft room down here, and then we're going to build our hydroponics bay. You know, you could put all this stuff down now, but if you do, it's really going to spread out how your characters act. So, it's, it's very important, especially at the beginning, slowly and methodically take your challenges out instead of just trying to, like, put a whole bunch of stuff down and then letting your characters do it. Um, what I used to do is actually get places set up before I did my bedrooms, and my characters would get so frustrated that they didn't have a place to sleep that they would leave the colony before my base was even done. And that's the game over. You basically, you're done. So, um... Yeah. So you can see now they're doing the hauling thing. This is great. Getting all this junk out of there. So we're basically done over here. So here, here we're going to do two very important things. The first one is bills. Now, anytime you build a production um, thing, tailor bench, smith bench, sculptor, butcher, cook stove, when you build them, they don't do anything. None. So you have to actually tell them what to do, and you do that with bills down here. So when you open the bill menu, you add a bill. So what we're doing right now, this is the cook bench. This is where they actually make food. Now people don't like eating raw food. Funny how that works. Um, so you need to actually tell them to cook a simple meal. Now all a simple meal takes is one vegetable. One of these. Or actually, I think it takes ten. What I should say is it only takes one ingredient. So what, what happens is we've, we've got plenty enough to start making those. So we're going to click on uh, add bill, simple meal. Now, we can also make fine meals and lavish meals, but you need to be higher levels in cooking and need more uh, of the cooking skill to actually do that. So what we're going to do now, we're going to cook the simple meal. Now, what that did is that put one simple meal to be made on this cookbench. Just one. You can see right there. So what will happen is if we, you know, go back to go and we find our cook, who is actually a priority hauler, so she's not going to cook anything while there needs to be hauling. So we're going to set her cooking as one. That's going to prioritize cooking. So Renee is now getting food, going here and cooking. Now check it out. Right when she did that, 
it immediately dropped down to zero and they're not going to cook anything else that's it so what we want to do is if you it, there, there's a couple of ways to do this before i knew how to do this properly what i would do is every time my character would eat stuff i'd go back to here and i would go okay i want you to make five more and then they'd go make five more and call it a day but you see this doesn't really work well because now you have to track how your colonists eat you have to track your food stores it's kind of annoying there's a much better way to do this what you want to do is click on the cook stove go to your bills click the config button and here this opens up the real kind of uh, uh, in-depth part of this and what this allows you to do is start setting exactly what that bill is going to do um, so what we're gonna do is right now the X value right over here is set to do it that amount of times but we don't want to do that we want to set it so we always have X amount so let's do until you have let's set it as 15 and what this is going to do is Renea is now going to keep making food until there are 15 food items there and once there are 15 she'll go do something else if someone eats one of them then that's less than 15 and it will automatically trigger that bill to go back beautiful done that's all you need to do um, now on the flip side the butcher bench here um, killing animals is something you can do in this game you can uh, select the hunt from orders and you can just drag a box over any creatures any creature with a red X immediately gets a task associated with them and anyone hunting when they are able will then go and hunt those down now um, when an animal dies normally they're forbidden they're forbidden uh, by default if an animal dies to a hunt then um, they will immediately haul it back to your stockpile and attempt to process it if you have a bill to do it so this is actually one of the few chances or the few times we can click on bills add bill butcher creature and we can just hit the infinite button and what this basically tells this is anytime there is a corpse in a stockpile i want a bill made to butcher it and what butchering the creature does is it gives you a product so like a leather or something and it gives you meat which can then be used for this so just to get a little bit more advanced um the fine meal actually take vegetables and meat and your characters instead of just getting a if you eat raw food it's a minus hit if you eat a simple meal it's neutral if you eat a fine meal it's a plus so if if you want to keep your guys really happy you eventually want them all eating fine meals but to have that happen you have to do a lot of hunting now one of the things that I'd love to see in this game that is not in this game yet is animal husbandry I would really love the opportunity to either catch animals and breed them or corral off animals and then have them keep reproducing neither of those exist in the game yet but hopefully we'll see one of them because right now it's a little weird because you can out hunt a map you can hunt the entire map and it's gone and then at that point you know that's it and also it's really annoying when your hunters have to start you know hunting stuff down here and it takes them half the day just to get down there it just, it just doesn't work well um so hopefully now this is a good point to mention that this game is an early access this is not a finished product and there are major patches released all the time so a lot of people are going, oh man, you know, I, he, he said this kind of sounded like Dwarf Fortress at the beginning, but it's starting to sound not nearly as in-depth. It's coming. Every patch adds major, major stuff. And um, yeah, so, so if you buy it now, you get access to all those patches that come in the future. And uh, every time a new patch comes out, it has basically changed how you play the game. So it's pretty cool. Um, but anyway, so we're going to go back to what we were doing. So now we have the butcher table set up with an infinite bill to butcher we have the cook table set up to always make meals and now we need to do the final part of our of our thing here and that is properly managing our food refrigeration so um oh the animals do respawn dsa clars it's just they take time 
yeah, they take time. So, um, and, and they will actually wander back into the map and you can have deer populations come in and muffalo, depending on what Rob, you know, you can do all sorts of stuff, but, but yeah. So, um, basically here's what we're going to do. We are going to set up a refrigerated area to store all of our food in. And that is going to, and again, you're probably thinking of better ways to do this yourself. Awesome. I highly suggest getting more world than doing it. But um, we are going to right now first mine out a section of the wall. We probably got to wait until morning, so we'll do that first. Okay. Hopefully one of our guys is mining. Okay, good. So what this did right here, we can now go into temperature, select a cooler. Now a cooler generates heat on one side and coolness on the other. So you need to make sure that your cool is inside of the area you want to be refrigerated. Also, you need to make sure you have doors on it because any opening, especially if you, if you have an opening to the outside, it won't do anything. If you have an opening inside of your base, um, then it will try to cool the entire inside of your base, which is good sometimes, but not all the time. Um, so we're going to put it right here to start with. We also need to get some power to it. So let's get that done. And what we're doing is we're preparing the fridge um, before we actually go in. So you can see, Bonsai just hunted that turtle. And he took it over here. And now Renea is bringing it over and butchering it for leather and meat. And she can actually make, uh, she doesn't even need vegetables. Oh, is she making a fine meal? Yeah, she just made a fine meal. Look at that. She just ate a fine meal and ate it. So now if we look at Renea, ate a fine meal. Five. Pretty awesome. So, um, let's go ahead and let this get done here. And perfect. Now, here's where that temperature thing gets a bit more important. If you mouse out here, look, look down here, okay? This is where we're looking. If we mouse outside, outdoors, 22 degrees. Now, let's move inside. Indoors, 22 degrees. Okay, so we're going to click on this. We're going to go down here. Right now, the target temperature is set to 21 degrees. Food will only freeze under zero Celsius. So we're going to go over here to the temperature. We're going to lower it. We'll set it at minus 10. And the reason we're going to set it at minus 10 is because this is a large room. And this is probably going to have to work a little bit overtime to cool it. So I'm going to keep my mouse over this room. Watch the temperature down here. 16, 17. Uh oh, but our power went out. <laughs> so it looks like we may need more power. So this is a good opportunity to uh, look at wind turbines, which is the other f other source of power. And we'll stick a little wind farm right. I don't want to put too much in the center stuff. Um, we also don't want it right in the mountains. Let's do it. Well, you know, we're just going to show you one of them. So let's put it right here. Uh oh. One of the moons of this planet has orbited in front of the sun. An eclipse has begun. Ah, perfect. So, Bonsai is uh, building... Oh, and that just reminded me. We need to build an eating room. Um, if there's not a table for them to eat at, they will eat on the ground, which they do not like. So, we're going to do a quick plan here for a 6x6. Six six. Um, actually, you know what? We're going to move it down just a little bit. Just a little bit. Oh, you know what? Actually, since this is our refrigerator, and we want the eating room to be by that, let's go ahead and we'll we'll basically make a room that's going to be the eating room. Right there. So we'll let them mine that out, and then we'll make that. Um, if you see, they actually get an eat off the ground. Eat off the ground is a negative modifier, so we want to get that out of there, too. Lord Duckworth, glad you're liking it, man. Thank you, buddy. All right, so here's the interesting thing about these. Now, when you make a wind turbine, did you see how it started high and then dropped? That's because it detected this tree, an oak tree. If you click on this, blocked by oak tree. So one of the tricks you can do with wind turbines, um, if any time there's ground, any time there is soil, any tree can grow there. Um, and what that means is that if this is all left as soil, at any point, a tree can pop up and um, block this. 
So a way you can prevent that is by clicking on floors, and then you can actually put a floor on the ground to prevent anything from growing up. So we're gonna use concrete. Concrete is ugly, but it's cheap. Kind of like real life. And um, what you can do, click this, you can see it comes right to there. We're gonna go back to our floor, concrete, and we're just gonna drag it out like that. Now, the important thing to watch here when we get this built is to watch the power level of this device. We also need to go ahead and put some conduit so it's actually connected into our network. So good, they're working on our eating area over here. That's great. We don't even need doors for this yet. We're just going to pop something down here so they can eat. Now, um, what I tend to do for my eating areas, and again, everyone can do different things for their eating areas. Um, I put one large table in the middle, and then I put uh, eight chairs around it. Now, I've never actually seen eight people eat at a table, even when your colonies are full, because people rarely eat at the same time. Um, but it's a, uh, it's a good place to look. Hey, Irukane, good to see you, buddy. It's a good way to get started, and frankly, I think it's kind of nice because it looks like a little dining room. So, I also put some lights in the corners, generally. A group from Branya Cheda are visiting the colony. Cool. Uh-oh. Lightning strikes can cause fire, but thankfully they normally happen when it's raining. So that's good. Something kind of fun. Every time it lightnings, if you look at your solar panels, they instantly jump to full power for a second. See if we can see it. And that actually works. If you look at your batteries, they'll actually get a jolt of power when it happens. Oh, now it's the next day, so it's fine. Can I get a square table with chair in everyone's room? Osgard, you can do that too. You can do that. That's that's another way to do it. The reason I don't do that, Osgard, is because it's. Uh, I feel like this saves more resources, especially at the beginning. But that's a very good way to do it. So we'll set all that to haul out. All right, so we're almost to the point where I think we can really start working on this. We need this to drop under zero C, and we need to get our energy problems in order first. Okay. I think we're going to be okay now. So, we're going to go over, and, and this is going to be kind of like the last, uh, this is what I'm going to do. I have been talking now for, I don't know how long, maybe an hour? I don't, how long has this tutorial been so far? I feel like I've been doing this for a while now. I, I, want it, I want this to be in sections, so people, you know, don't see like a two-hour tutorial and think it's too daunting. So I'm going to explain one more key thing. And then we'll go ahead and end the tutorial for now. And this will be like the basic tutorial. And then later we'll do a more advanced tutorial on like kill boxes, shipbuilding, um, research, allocation, hydroponics. We'll do all that in a, in a future game or a future tutorial. So what I'm going to show you now is the very, very important aspect of managing stockpiles. Now, properly having your... your uh, Properly having your resources go to the right place is extremely important, especially when you're talking about dump zones, corpse areas. Um, later on, you're going to start getting a lot of weapons, putting them in the right place, um, all sorts of stuff. So what we're going to show you now is how to, how to kind of... I'm going to give you all the basics, and then you can take all those ideas and kind of do your own things with them. So here's what we're going to do. The goal... A, a good way to start working with, with stockpiles is by laying down goals. So what do you want to happen? Um, what a lot of people do, for instance, is you could very easily, um, for instance, go in here and make a 3x3 three three stockpile that only holds metal. And then what will happen is your haulers will haul metal into here, and any time your builders need to build, they don't need to run outside to get metal. They can just do it right here. That's one example of a way to properly use, like, utilize stockpiles. You can also have mini stockpiles specifically for each individual resource so you know you'll have exactly um you'll know exactly where things are you can easily see where they are things like that there's all sorts of things you can do with stockpiles um stockpile chaining is also something you can do that's a pretty advanced thing though um what we're going to do first though let's let's go back to what i started with the goal so our goal right now is we want to take anything perishable and we want to make sure it goes in our fridge that's our goal so what we're going to do is we're gonna first make our stockpile. Now, this looks pretty daunting when you start it, and, and 
let me tell you, it's it gets so much easier as you as you work with it. Um, what we what you do is you click on storage to bring up the stockpile menu, and I wish I could move this around. I don't think I can, but luckily I think the important things are there. Um, now a stockpile always starts like this. A stockpile always has everything active except chunks, and chunks are these, and corpses. Um, all of the stuff that's off in a normal stockpile is on on a dumping stockpile. They're, they're opposite. So a normal stockpile stores goods, a dumping stockpile stores junk. This is a good way to think about it. Um, what we're going to do in this case is we're going to click on this stockpile, and we want to start from scratch. So we're going to hit clear all. So right now, if I unpause it, this stockpile does nothing. Nothing will be brought to it. Nothing will be done with it. Now, what we're going to do, I'm going to go ahead and collapse these menus so you guys can follow along with me. Um, the first thing we're going to do is go into resources and foods. Now, we could break this down into individual food components if we wanted to. And you can see, it actually breaks down into the individual things you can get. Even down to the meat, specific types of meat. You can see like hair meat, iguana meat, scarab meat, all this stuff. Now, we don't need to go quite that deep. In fact, we don't even need to go into the foods menu. We're just going to click the X next to foods. So what this is going to do is now anytime there's food, this will be considered as a place to bring it. It doesn't mean they're going to bring it here. It just means they're going to consider this stockpile. Now that's, it, that's important and I'll come back to that. So we have the foods marked. So all foods going to get brought in here. Now there's something else we want in here. If, if an animal is killed, it's brought to a dumping stockpile because you can see right here animal corpses are a check so what we're gonna do is in our dumping stockpile we are going to remove animal corpses and in our refrigerator we're going to add animal corpses and what that means is now anytime something's killed it's gonna be brought directly into our refrigerator awesome small victories small victories um, so, that's a good place to start. Now, there is one, there's a few other things that require refrigeration, but there's one very important one. And that is under manufactured medicine, herbal medicine. Herbal medicine spoils, and it's that stuff that comes out of these plants right here. Xerogeum, which you can again, just select by any growing zone, clicking on the plant, it's actually a plant you can select, Xerogeum. Xerogeum is a quick way to get um, uh, early medicinal resources. Um, Apocalypse Sicko uh, asks, is this game on Steam? No. If you're interested in this game, you need to go to rimworldgame.com to pick it up. Yes. Um, so, let's go back to where we are now. We have our storage. It is going to bring in animal corpses, herbal medicine, and all the food. Here is where stockpile management takes a hard turn. Priority. Now, a good $10 donation from Rage Emotion. Merry Christmas, everyone. Thank you, Rage Emotion. Happy holidays, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. Um, a good way to think of priorities is the number system in the overview. Now, what do I mean by that? If there is a stockpile with priority critical and something selected, if there are no other stockpiles with critical selected, it will always go to that pile. If this pile is, let's say this stockpile is completely full. Rage Emotion! Good show, sir! Thank you for your sub. Guys, let's give him a warm one. Awesome. Um, let's say your stockpile is completely full. Well, then it's going to go down the list. Is there an important stockpile that I can put this in? No? Let's go down the list. Is there a preferred stockpile? Etc, etc, all the way down to low. Everything starts as normal. So you can actually under priority a stockpile if you want to. First issue, have a good day, bud. So what we're gonna do is because we want all the food in here, we are gonna set this priority as preferred. This stockpile is normal. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna watch what happens when we have a one hauler 
and the wrong item in a stockpile where there's a, another one with it more preferred. Let's get a couple people on hauling. Watch down here. Did you see what Bonsai just did? Bonsai just walked to this stockpile, picked it up from here, and is now carrying it into our refrigerator. So see, you can use stockpiles that are already stocked as stepping stones to get to different parts of your base. You can even chain stockpiles into your base so they fill from the out in or the inside out. So you can have these very complex chained events where they all kind of, you know, differently influence how materials and goods are distributed throughout your base. Learning how to utilize stockpiles is huge because remember, a big part about this game is maximize or excuse me, minimizing the amount of space that your colonists need to travel. If your characters are moving across the map like this, this is a problem. I can already tell you right now that's a problem. See see how much... Well, everyone is hauling, so... But if your characters, on a regular basis, are doing these long-ass runs to different parts of the map, or hell, even long-ass runs inside of your area, back and forth, you probably can do something different to get that working properly. So, yeah. That's, that's one of those important things to mention, especially when you're dealing um, in early game. So... In this tutorial, we've gone over how to start a game, how to pick your initial colonists, how your initial setup works, basic base building, stockpile management, power management, uh, gone over basic needs, which by the way, this now covers every basic need. They all have a place to sleep, they all have a place to eat, the base is clean, food is now growing, technically we are now at a stable colony, and at this point you can do you can go so many directions from here. You can start building defense. You can work on your power grid. You can get a hydroponics farm going for when it freezes. You can get um, a crafting area set up. You can start trading with ships. You can uh, expand your base out. You can start saving up money so you can free slaves and then add them to your people. There are so many ways you can go with this game that if you wanted to, every single playthrough could be different. So, yeah. I really hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Um, I will most likely be making a more advanced tutorial down the road, covering things like hydroponics, shipbuilding, um, more advanced power management, geothermal regulation, killbox building, uh, defense perimeters and, and the best way to do those, weapons, weapon handling, um, armories, how to properly set those up. Yeah, we're probably going to do some more advanced tutorials down the road, but this is going to go ahead and end it for now. Very hope you much. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you liked what you see, um, please be sure to check me out on twitchtv slash carnage if you're watching this from my YouTube. As I love playing games like this as much as I can, and uh, yeah, thanks for.